Welcome to the Innovation Network. I'm Lamore Schaffman, and with me is Adam Trexler from Valorum. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, Lamour. So Valorum has a fascinating product involving gold, which is something that we all enjoy. So tell us a little bit about it. Sure. Well, we make the Aurum, which is the smallest increment of 24 karat gold available on the world market. Uh, it's a thin sheet. Uh, it looks like this. This is an Aurum, and it contains a tenth of a gram of gold, which is, uh, you know, they get sold for about $10 a unit, and it makes gold available to everybody in the world. And so now, how are you taking this ability, and what are you actually doing? So you're putting it on sheets of paper, which is really fascinating. I don't know if you all can see this, but it actually looks like a piece of currency. So how are you using this? Right, well, uh, let, me, let me go back to your earlier question, which is, you know, what is it? And it's actually um, a gold sandwich. So there's a layer of uh, pri proprietary polyester, and then we deposit a thin layer of gold, atom by atom, which is, it's a nanotechnology to, uh, both deposit the gold in that way and also to have the precision to have exactly a tenth of a gram repeatably. And then we put another layer of polyester on top of that. And what that does is you have a durable, strong package that contains exactly a tenth of a gram of gold. So when you're saying this involves nanotechnology, it sounds like there was a lot of development, product development that was necessary for this. Can you tell us a little bit about that history? Absolutely. So the, uh, the product was actually invented not by me, but by two inventors, Paul Diffendeffer and Laurie Johansson. Uh, they worked in thin film technology. Um, they invented a lot of other coatings and, you know, industrial applications. And they realized that as the price of gold went from $300 up to well over 1000 um, the gold that they could deposit actually became a... Uh, a commodity in its own right that was very valuable. And uh, they developed the technology and we've had a lot of other people work on it as well. Um, and it's taken many years to be able to uh, reach this level of precision in the product where it just looks like a nice note. And it sounded like the polyester was um, something that was specifically developed for this. So I'm presuming you have patents on this technology and things like that. Not to, if it's patent, it's, it's public, but still, can you share with us a little bit about what that process was like? Sure. Well, we have about a dozen trade secrets, um, you know, that are barriers to entry. Um, but we were just granted our first patent in Australia, and we think that a lot of others will follow from that. Fantastic. Congratulations. I thought that's not easy. Um, so now you're putting this into different products. Can you give us some examples of the kinds of products where this is being used? Sure. So we really have three markets for the product. Um, and this was one of the things that took a little while to understand. Uh, the first is that we can sell it as a promotional item. So people can have a diploma, a business card, uh, a, a giveaway with intrinsic value. And people are very excited about that. We've done uh, a number of deals with uh, multinational corporations, uh, private individuals who want to be able to give gold. Um, the second market is for gold bullion, which just means that people are buying or selling a precious metal for its intrinsic value. Uh, we have gold bullion dealers now, uh, national bullion dealers, and we're expanding that market. Uh, the third application is actually to make currency for a country. So we never call this legal tender. We say this is gold, and we say this is a precise amount of gold. If you look, this says a tenth of a gram of gold. A country is able to put their own uh, stamp on it, a central bank could do that, and they would say this is, uh, you know, 100 rupees or, you know, $20 or whatever it is, and then that would become the first gold-backed currency in a very long time. I would say, because actually, are there any more backed gold, gold-backed currencies around no. the world? Uh, central banks hold uh, gold as one of their uh, reserve items, but there's no gold-backed currencies anymore. Of course, uh, in the 19th century, it used to be that you could redeem your bill, your note, for uh, silver or gold, and you can't do that anymore. So now, where do you see this element of the currency, or where do you see this progressing in the future? How do you see your markets growing? And there's a lot of stuff happening. Right. Bitcoin is existing, so you're having new currencies being developed. What do you see this, this element happening in the future, and how is your product going to play in that future of what currency is going to look like? Well, I think we have this really interesting moment where people are looking beyond what have been the accepted currencies in the last 50 years. Uh, People are very excited about blockchain technology and about digital exchange. And of course, a lot of people make most of their transactions now on credit uh, or, you know, with credit cards through a Visa net network. Um, 
what I see happening is that as we've moved towards that, as we're moving towards uh, more and more virtual currency, people want a store of value that's intrinsic, is personal, and is held in their hands. And so we see this as a complementary uh, technology for a 21st century currency landscape, whether that's in gold or in uh, you know, a government-issued currency. Uh, and I think that's the way things will go. Um, and other kinds of product lines or things that you see happening in the future. You've got this great, I think it's phenomenal from a gift perspective, as you said, awards and certificates. Um, are universities picking this up, alumni associations? What do you see happening in that area? You know, we've had a lot of interest from that. Uh, we have a couple huge dealers that we're working with um, and a couple countries that we're working with, and that's really been absorbing the majority of the company's time in the last few months, and I think we are going to have some very exciting news to announce in the next month or two. Wonderful. So final question, uh, innovation. I always ask this question. So how do you define innovation? Because what you've done is very innovative. Oh, that's a tough question, Lamar. Um, you know, I think innovation is standing in a place of uncertainty and looking out into the future and not knowing how something will be and creating a vision and then backfilling that and figuring out what specific pieces you need to happen to get to a point that nobody could foresee. Wonderful. Adam, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Lamar.